three, two. <laughs> there we go. I think we're live now. We've been playing around here. And um, I was going to look this way to say Igor, but Igor, what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about a, a day in the life of a Mr. Floor wood floor. Oh, wow. Like a whole thing? A whole thing. A day in the life? A day in the life. As it's going down and the whole kit and kaboom. Yeah, we're going to talk about it from, from the beginning through. So we're going to see a complete yeah, job. Yeah. Three, we're gonna two. We're going to talk about a complete job. Yeah. All right, excellent. All right, and of course we got Aaron on this side of me. Absolutely. We're going to take floor. you. We're going to take you from the beginning where we get a phone call in the process all the way through to the end of the job, and especially how to clean your floors. Oh, there you go. Of course. <laughs> all right. Hey, Fuzzy, why don't you roll that uh, open for us? Can you do that? In three, two. Here I come to save the day. See, there's all this enforcement. Welcome to go. Mighty House. This is a radio show for people with problems. Home improvement problems, that is. And for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email or call into the show. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right, we well, can't call in because we don't have a phone number, but you can always make a comment on Facebook, YouTube. We've got people watching that for you, and uh, feel free to make any comments. Or if you've got questions for these guys, then uh, go ahead and post those questions also. In the meantime, make sure you hit the uh, like button and hit subscribe, and that way you'll be notified every time we do hit the air. So, uh, who wants to start this baby off? Well, you know what? As as you can see, we're sitting here in our, our showroom in Stoke. Yeah, here, watch. Let me get down here. All see, way. this is our beautiful showroom. <laughs> see? <laughs> so, see? Look at um, that showroom. Look at that showroom. A tower so, full of samples right here. Exactly. That's right. So, actually, those samples are something we actually get a call. A call the, somebody calls in and says, hey, I need to get a new floor. Right. Okay, and we'll start talking to them about what what's the... Uh, uh, application is it a is it a high rise is it a single family home what what are we looking to put in? But does it matter that if if it's going on a concrete floor versus a wood floor? Uh, yes, we're putting in a floor, right? What's we are putting deal? in a floor, and it does matter because if you have a concrete floor and you want and you're in a high rise, um, you're typically going to go with an engineered floor versus a solid wood floor. Now, okay, it doesn't mean you can't put in a solid wood floor. If you put in a solid wood floor, you actually have to add plywood which adds height, which causes challenges when you can't cut the front door and then you can't get into your unit. Because <laughs> so, you have steel doors. <laughs> exactly. So we typically are putting in an engineered floor unless the actual condo has been um, We remove the port. entire door frame and assembly. You put your floor and then we reset this, cut the opening and reset the con into the concrete wall. So, so a nice step up into right, the adjacent exactly. Wall. <laughs> so, so, so I will phrase this by Ron removes the door. <laughs> then he lets us come in and right. put the floor in. Right. And then Ron has to deal with the rest. Got it. Got it. <laughs> That's exactly. got so it. we get the phone call in. We start talking about what is needed. Okay. What's there now? What's the application? And then we will either go out to see them, we'll bring them into our showroom to see, hey, samples. This, this place right here? This place right here. We look at the samples in that tower yeah, right let's there. Let's step back out of the way. Just oh, look at right that beautiful here. showroom. This tower right here. Yeah. And if sonar switches to the next picture, we'll show you some samples. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> See how quickly I did that to you? Here? You got to accuse them of being fuzzy. Just say, okay. hey, fuzzy. Hey, fuzzy. So so I took a picture of these samples this afternoon. OK. Um, just general samples. The large one underneath is an engineered floor. It's a wide plank. That's this one here. That's the dark one right yeah, in the, the middle here. Okay. Yeah. That's like a, uh, what do they call that? What color is that? That's that's uh, uh, charcoal driftwood. gray. Drift, driftwood. No, no, it's your favorite color gray. That's why I did it. <sighs> Uh, no, let's call it driftwood. <laughs> it's driftwood. I'm going to call that a driftwood color. Driftwood gray. Because it's got lighter and darker grays in it. It's, but it's gray. Anyways, <laughs> um, so I threw that in there. That is an oak. It's a European oak. This, this one? Nope. This one. That one? Okay. No. no. That, that <laughs> one. This one right there in the middle. Come on. All right. Tommy Skillet okay. does this real easy. Exactly. Yeah, but he's been doing it for 40 years. Listen, <laughs> that's the difference. Where's Van? I need her to turn a, turn a vowel. Anyways, so on this side here, that is just a standard oak. It's a solid wood floor, three and a quarter inch wide. Okay. And then you're standing in front of a maple, which is a stained maple. Got it. Oh, that darker one. Yep. So 
we have darker colors and lighter colors, and we do that with pre-finished floors all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's not only the oak that is light and the maple that's dark. We can do whatever we need to do. Okay, but when we have a client that says, hey, I have two bedrooms that have oak in them already, and I need to match that floor. That's when we go from a solid pre-finished into a solid site finished, which is what we do a lot of. Okay? Wait, but this is engineered, right? It, no, the this middle is one's engineered. Okay. The two on the sides are solid wood. To be sanded and stained anyway. They could be sanded and stained, but these are actually factory finished. So they're made in a factory, you install them, they're done. Well, don't those have like the crumb they, catcher grooves in them? That they, they have micro bevels. They're not <laughs> crumb catchers. That's a technical term. That's a technical term. Okay, I got it. I didn't, I didn't know that technical term existed. It was existed. a crumb catchers. They are um, subfloor undulation. Okay, let, let, okay. Let, me, let me stop you for a second. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All kidding aside, yeah. those little grooves do two very important things. Okay. The first thing that they do is they allow us to align the boards when we install over a subfloor, which as we all know in the construction world, there is no such thing as a flat. It's no, it's never flat. perfect. And since we don't have the luxury of sanding the floor in place, we have to be able to align those boards in such a way that we don't have one board peaking above the other board, and then you kind of feel that when you run your hand across it. So those little grooves actually mitigate that and allows us to install a floor fairly flat over a subfloor that's not very flat, without having to actually sand the floor. But what you're using today, what you're, what you're calling the micro bevel, yeah. mm -hmm. is, it's very fine. It's not like it was in the 90s. If you get into an older home that was built in the 90s and it has pre-finished floor, when you walk on it, you can feel every groove yep. mm -hmm. and how, how um, you, it's very obvious that it was pre-finished. Right. With what you're putting in today, it's, it, it's, it's a, a lot harder to find. Yeah, it's, it's a, a sixteenth of an inch. inch. The, the tolerances are very, very tight. We, can't, we shouldn't go tighter than a sixteenth of an inch because then we kind of defeat the purpose again. But we have found in the industry that if we're at about a sixteenth of an inch, which is very, very tight, it still allows for us to be able to mitigate those subfloor undulations. Right. The second thing that it does, very, very important, is if in the future, let's say we do your kitchen with one of these floors, and you cause damage to a small section of that floor. Not me. I know. Not I me. know. He still but has his <laughs> hypothetically, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, yes. folks. The dog. Ron, yes, the, the dog, you know, yeah. right. knocks over its bowl and, and uh, you know, has, has a, a little accident. Right. We have the ability, because of those little micro grooves, we have the ability to come in and pluck out individual boards if we need to and stagger in brand new boards and you don't have to touch the rest of the floor. So when you're ordering, you're going to save a little bit of extra. Right. That just goes in storage somewhere in goes a safe, in storage. dry place. We'll keep it. You'll keep it somewhere at home. But what we can do is we can come in and pull out that board and this board and that one over there, surgically pulling those boards out and putting in a brand new piece because of that little bevel. Because each board has been coated and sprayed separately of all the other boards, mm -hmm. it's its own small floor in essence. And so we have the ability to plug those individual boards out, put in new boards, and it's like, you know, the damage never happened. That is a major, major benefit of those types of floors, especially in a home where there's young kids, heavy use, pets. It's inevitable. You're going to have dings and dents and damage. Sure. So either you're going to sand that floor. I call that character. Character is good. Sure. Yeah. And, we, and we have certain floors that come pre-characterized, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> there you That's go. the look you're after. Right. And then exactly. you just sort of take over and right. beat it up a little more, and it well, looks great. And if you need to, you can just call Fuzzy. Fuzzy will bring his kids over. It'll look like that in no time. There you go. There you go. So that's, that's, that's always good. That's There's yeah, another. We've got sippy cups on the ready. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. My down. Nice. No problem. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. No, not anymore. Yeah. But I think people watching can definitely relate to, you know, dropping things and oh, sure. dings and, and, and dents well, and If you're cooking and stuff, you drop a knife and then it's like blink, the Absolutely. knife's sticking straight up out of the wood. You're like, oh, man. Absolutely. The Absolutely. other big benefit to having a pre-finished or a factory finished floor is the actual finish. So you are getting a much better baked finish. So your warranties are going to uh, be longer. The floor is actually going to last a lot longer just because of the finish. Any finish that anybody can put on is going to be three coats, maybe four coats of finish. A pre-finished floor or a factory finished floor is coming out with seven coats, nine coats. And, it's, and the difference coats. is it's cured. It's actually right. it's, it's, be baked, cured. it's baked on. And that's the difference between a site applied finish, which it just simply air dries, and a finish that we actually can bake in the factory. Right. So mm -hmm. it's going to end up coming out harder that way. Much harder. Right. Much harder. And, and more durable. Absolutely. Exactly. So, all right. Well, we've got about a minute left here, and we're going to take a quick break. We are talking with, let's see, let me see if I can do this, with 
Aaron and Igor. Good job, buddy. See, see how that works? My We're third show, I'm a pro. That's why you're, that's what you're on the This middle. is what you need to do with Aaron and Igor. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there you go. With Aaron and Igor from, from Mr. Floor. And, uh, of course, you can stop by their showroom, which is, you want to pop up the showroom? It looks exactly like this. If Fuzzy yeah, gets rid of really that picture. Does. While he's queuing up. There, see, there look at that. Yeah. So you can stop into this showroom right here and do all your selections. That's figure it out uh, exactly what you want to do to your floors and, yeah. and get it squared away. And that showroom is where? Yeah, we're at uh, 3828 West Oakton Street in Skokie. Uh, or you can visit us online at www.mrfloor.com. Hey, Ron, right. I yes. tell you what. When we come back, I yeah. think we're going to go over to our acclimation room. Oh, you want to go to the acclimation room? I think room? we're going to go to the acclimation room. great idea, Aaron. I like and we'll, 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 we'll tell you what happens when we get the material in. We'll talk about what an acclimation room actually is. There you go. No, nobody else has that that I know Not of. Nope. You guys are special that way. So, Absolutely. See, I, I'm watching the clock there, Fuzzy. I'm, I'm down. <laughs> I, I, I know exactly what you're doing. So we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we're going to move all this equipment into the acclimation room. And we'll be back right after this. You didn't, you didn't turn, turn your, your mic, mic off. off. Okay, stand by. All right. Here, I'll at least bring you guys back. <clears throat> bring us back properly, would you? <laughs> like, yeah, I need a. <laughs> we need a proper reintroduction. Right. If you can insert proper in here at all. See that? It's amazing how good they've done that. Yeah. See, I work construction. I build things. I don't know if y'all realize the pressure a man like me's got on. This is Mighty House. All right, you can join us on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Periscope Live right now. Brought to you in part by 
these gentlemen right here, Mr. Floor, and wherever you're watching, make sure you click on the like button and uh, hit that subscribe so you'll be notified when we hit the air. If, you want, if you're checking out the podcast of all of our shows, it's at MightyHouse.net, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and on HomeImprovementUSA.com. You can find links to all of them at MightyHouse.net also. And if you want to sign up for the newsletter and you want to just get all this information through the newsletter, just go to MightyHouse.net, click on the Mighty House team page, and contact us. Scroll to the bottom and you'll, you'll find us right there. And uh, fill out the information, click on the boom done, and you'll get it taken care of right there. So uh, we'll send that out. We're sending it out on Friday afternoon still. So we finally started doing that again last week. And you'll have a copy of the show, the links to all the different places to listen, and any new information like these guys. You'll have their website and information there too. So. Uh, that should be See, it. Am I pointing with my, my correct finger? There you go. See, yes, right, right there. there. Yeah. Not to be confused with right. this device. It's, it's all I can't the way figure out how to do it. I got you right there. Right. Come on, Aaron. There you go. There, you there go. it is. Okay. So. See, I'm showing off my skull again. It's, it's good. <laughs> all right. So, um, so now we've moved. We are in, what do you call this? The, this is our acclimation center. Okay. So before I met you guys, the way every wood floor company we ever worked with, what they would do is they bring the wood in and they they set it on the job and it needs to sit there and acclimate. Right. And and that means you want the the humidity in the room and the wood to kind of come to be about the same levels, so that when you install it, it doesn't cup curl or have any other issues. Correct. But with you guys, you just come in and start slamming wood down. Yeah. So and, and what's how can you get away with this when everybody else can't? Okay, so we don't just come in and start slamming wood down. <laughs> do, you well, see, do you see how I screw with them? Man, <laughs> slamming is not what right. uh, we would refer to our installation methodology. Right. The, first, the, the first thing that happens is our project manager comes in yes, and checks does. the environment. Yes. So why does he check the environment? Because we want to make sure that the environment is ready and suitable for the wood to come in. Because our wood is acclimated. Right, so if, let's say you, a large project, the drywall's done, they've taped it, they've been in there priming and painting, and the humidity's sky high. Yes. We will not bring, we will not bring <laughs> our wood in. Because <laughs> the, the, the project, the job site, is not ready for you guys Correct. to bring your stuff in. So if the HVAC hasn't been running, if, if it's too cold or too humid or too dry. August, no AC running. Exactly. Basement full of water. You know, that's <laughs> Well, well, basement full of water is an right. issue unless it's a swimming pool. Right. Anyways, so our project manager is going to check the environment. We need to check the environment to make sure that we're ready to bring our wood in. If we're not ready to bring our wood in, we're going to ask the homeowner to adjust the, the, the environment so that it's ready. It may take a day. It may take two days. Okay. Once the environment is within correct and suitable range, we come in and we start Properly installing you don't the slam wood it floor. In? You don't slam it in? We <laughs> what do you call that big hammer that you're swinging? We carry it in and, and gently place it down. <laughs> and then Especially if it's pre-finished. Exactly. Yeah. And then systematically install it. Okay. Plank so by plank. Let's back up a little bit. <laughs> let's back up a little bit. And what I want to touch on, which I think is a very important point, is the fact that our philosophy, Ron, is completely different than the entire industry, as you just mentioned. Yeah. And the difference between our philosophy and the rest of the industry is they're acclimating the wood to the home. We're actually looking to acclimate the home to, to the wood. Oh, yeah. And the reason we want to do that is because we've already done the job of acclimating the wood to the correct range that it needs to be in for proper installation and function. So our wood is kept in a very static environment as that's, this that's sort of this picture. Is. And Absolutely. Is that what this machine is doing in the ceiling? What right, so that, that basically is um, uh, controlling the temperature. It's controlling the humidity. So we actually control both temperature and humidity simultaneously within this acclimation facility. So you can see if Aaron stepped to the other side. And, here, yeah. you come in here and you point. So you could see right here. So what we have is we have all of this wood that's basically in acclimation right now. Uh, and this is getting ready to go onto a, a project, and it's been sitting there for, we like to keep our materials in as long as possible, but at a minimum for a week to 10 days. And what that allows the wood to do is, you know, if it comes in on a cold truck, like it's, you know, it's very cold today, we, you know, we receive that material, it immediately gets placed into the acclimation facility so that it can season properly. 
Once we have stabilized that wood and once we've acclimated it to correct range, then the wood is ready to be installed in the home if the home is ready to receive it. Got it. And this is what Aaron was talking about where he said, um, you know, uh, our project managers will come in, they'll take moisture readings, they'll take environmental readings, and then if the, the home is ready to receive that wood, then the wood is, is brought in and we can start installation right away. If the home is not ready to receive it, we're going to ask the homeowner, the contractor, the builder to do what is needed to make sure that that home is ready for, uh, for that wood to arrive. Okay, so let's, let's just say, for instance, um, a flooring company, they bring, a, bring in their, their, the, the wood that just came out of the warehouse, yep. that they just bought at the warehouse. They set it in a, in a house and it's August. The humidity is really, really high. Yep. They put all this wood in and they sand it and finish it, what's, what, what happens then in November and December or January with that floor? What's going on with it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an excellent question. And in Chicago, more so than other climates, it's critically important because of the massive temperature humidity swings that we go through. So what, what will happen with that material if it's not acclimated properly or if it's installed uh, over a wet subfloor, as Aaron was saying, or the humidity in the home is too high or too low, whatever the case might be, is that the floor is not stable and it's not static. So it's always going to want to move to fit the environment in which it's, it's, it's basically been installed. Exactly. Right. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to find that sweet spot. We don't want to make it too moist. We don't want to make it too dry. We're looking to acclimate it to a particular moisture content. And that moisture content, if you were to use a pin meter and you stick it inside that wood, will give you a particular reading to tell you on, on a percentage basis what is the moisture content of that, of that wood. So, you know, in construction, you hear of green lumber. What is green lumber? Well, it's wet, Yeah. right? You don't want to install green lumber in anything, whether it's a two by four, a stud, no. a truss, <laughs> certainly not flooring, right. because it's going to at some point dry up and it's going to move and it's going to do, you know, all kinds of funny things that you don't want it to do. Right. So right. this is the, the whole impetus of why we have this acclimation facility, why we do things a little bit differently, why we'll come out to somebody's home and make sure that the home is ready for us to deliver our wood rather than just dropping a load of wood in your living room and then good luck to you. Right. Which is what the, really the everybody else industry does. does exactly. so, so one of the key things that we didn't see, and I'm going to ask to move a water bottle over a little bit. I can so do that. if you look, if Igor moves over to, okay, so on the wall, if I can point, now you're standing right in front of it, Ron. Right, okay. So right in here, you yep. see all that equipment? Yep. So uh, Sonar is actually putting it, up oh, on the actual screen. Yep. These are all of our monitoring um, devices. So we're, oh, wow, we're, look at that. We're, we're checking daily and adjusting daily the temperature and the humidity for what it is outside to be what it is inside so that we're staying within range at all times. So what that simply means is we acclimate down in the wintertime, meaning mm -hmm. that we want our wood to be a little drier in the winter. Come on in. Um, but we don't want it to be so dry that it sort of collapses, right? So we get it to the lowest point that we can, which is basically at about, we keep it at about 30% relative humidity, which takes its moisture content down to about 6%. And then in the, you know, as we progress into the spring and into the summer months, we'll acclimate up to about 45, almost 50% relative humidity in that room, which will allow that moisture content in the wood to get up to about 8%, maybe 8.5%. And what that does is it mimics and replicates what the moisture content of the home and the plywood subfloor is in a typical Chicago home at that time. Right. And this is something you guys have, uh, I, I would assume, have come to work out over the years. You've figured yeah. out at what time of year, what, what's going on outside is what you need to be doing inside. Absolutely. 100%. And this is not, because this, like, again, this is a unique thing you guys are doing. So. Yeah. yeah. And our project managers, when they're in somebody's home, you know, they're documenting and, and, and we're, we're collecting all that data from every single home that we come into contact with. So we know on a daily basis, as Aaron was just saying, on a daily basis, we know where that moisture content or where that relative humidity needs to be, where that temperature needs to be. So we're either asking homeowners to go up or down on the temperature, turn on or turn off humidifiers, dehumidifiers. So we're constantly in communication, and people really appreciate that, and the results speak for themselves. Right. Right. So if we were to drop the wood in like every other company out there, and you had the exact thing that you were talking about, you just painted a 3,000-square-foot home, completely painted, primed and painted, yep. all that humidity is in there, you drop the wood and you say, we'll be back in a week. All that humidity is going right into the wood, right? and now your, 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 your moisture content of the wood is elevated. So we come back in a week, we check the moisture content, and we say, now we can't start because it's deacclimated your right. wood, <laughs> right? Which is, which is an issue. Right. So, and if you did install it with all that moisture in there, then 
in January, you end up with large gaps, you're gonna have gaps cups and cups. Exactly, you're going to have all kinds of it. And you have a lot of problems with it, and mm -hmm. that's a lot of where the squeaking comes from then too, right. I would assume, right? Yep, you get squeaking. So, One of the, so Ron says, yes, I want to move forward with you. We order your wood, we get your wood, it goes into this acclimation room and gets acclimated before we come out to the job. Site. Whether it's pre-finished or just raw and you're going to be sanding and finishing, yes, everything correct. goes in here. Correct. What about engineered? Engineer doesn't have to be acclimated as long, but we still put it yeah, in it there. It still too. goes in here. Yes. If Absolutely. nothing else, just to warm it up, just to bring it to temperature, Ron, because again, things are coming off the, the truck right now. You know, you, you put a digital thermometer on that box, it's 20 degrees. Oh, sure. You know, the, the wood is just frozen. So if nothing else, we're going to bring it in here and get it to, you know, proper room temperature so that it's ready to go when the job is, is ready for it. And you can actually see right up here, and we're right, right there, is a big garage door. Yep. That gets closed, so every because our whole warehouse is not climate controlled like this. Oh no, it's just the acclimation room that's got that, it. That's climate controlled like it's this. It's basically just a, it's almost like a large humidor around. Think of it, you know, we've partitioned and sectioned off yep. uh, this section of our of our warehouse to basically keep it as static as possible. That's amazing. So. Yeah, yeah, it really gives us a massive advantage, we think, in Chicago, and also the inconvenience factor. We don't have to then, you know, inconvenience our clients by dropping a load of wood in their living room, and then we'll see you in a week. I mean, that's ridiculous. Right, and then, then we have to work around it. Right. right. So it's better that it's it's there, and, and uh, it, you bring it in when you need it. And I Correct. So I, we've been working together for plenty plenty of years, and I'll tell you, it works great. So I ran out to the, uh, to the truck, and I grabbed a sample, so I don't know if you'll be able to see this real well, but there... Can I move up closer? Yeah, you can oh, come right, go. go right up in there. You've got about a minute before we hit the All break. Right. So, if you look, ooh, here we go. I'm, I'm bad at this. Okay, do you see? <laughs> do you see? There's a small. Notice nobody argued with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody's complaining. So there is a small M micro bevel. Right? Micro bevel. It, it's not a crumb catcher, right? right? It's not a crumb catcher. It's okay. A micro bevel. So we have that, and this is solid. This is engineered. So this goes straight over concrete. This has to be nailed in. So how do you get that over concrete then? What? This? The, no, that. Are, are you gluing it down? You can't nail you're it. Floating. We, can glue it. we can glue it or float it. Yeah. Right. So you're gluing the pieces together? We're gluing yeah, the, or the you tongue and groove together. Okay. Because yep. that's going to expand and contract at a different rate than the concrete. Correct. Right. And all of those layers that Aaron was just showing on, on uh, camera here really help with dimensional stability. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to... This is Mighty House. Mighty House. Mighty Mighty House. Will we turn? <laughs> Throw it in here. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Oh. All right, cool. So do we want to go back to the showroom? Yeah, I think we should go to your job site. Oh. oh you, want, you want the whole, we're, we're just going to do, do that in the box. Okay. Uh, but so, we, do, we do that in the box because then you can. So go back to the showroom. Go back to the showroom and then we'll, and then we'll, we'll drop we'll, the box. We'll there. drop the box in. How do you like that? You got that fuzzy? I can do it. We got you working. You're earning your money today. We didn't, we didn't show him the, the garage door from the outside. <laughs> There's a picture. Yeah, I know. You can go to it, yeah. We're, we're leaving. <laughs> yeah. Much smaller picture. There you go. Trying to teleport you guys back to the same place. Yeah. Yep. Ish. Be my sub, Scotty. That's it. Okay. So you ready? All right, let's see where we're at. Is this this is the third segment, right? Third segment, yes, sir. And then we got four, huh? Yeah, three, three, four. We got we're well, doing this one. Then we got a we got another ten minute one or thirteen, and then we got a just go so fast. Uh huh. It's incredible. I'm like really. Hot. <laughs> and then we got a then we've got a, like a eight minute one. Perfect. And that's only because we have to adhere to radio. Right. We could probably just keep going. Right. We're just we're just blocking it out so right. that that way. It's easier just to send each each second. Here I come to save the day. Here they come to save the day. This is Mighty House. All right, we are back, and uh, you can watch us on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and Periscope Live right now. All you got to do is uh, go to our Mighty House web website, and you'll be able to click right through to those links and get that figured out. 
Uh, if you're on there, make sure you hit, hit the subscribe button and the like buttons and, and all that fun stuff. So that way you'll be notified next time we hit the air. And in studio with us today are these guys, Mr. Floor, as I like to say. Hello, everybody. Aaron and Igor. How are you and doing? Uh, we're talking flooring today, and we're kind of going over a lot of different stuff. We've talked basically about wood floors and how to get it into your house. So um, at this point, you've, you've brought some pictures of a job site. It's a job site you may it's recognize. It's very, fa very familiar to me, by the way. Anyway, we're, we're going to show you step-by-step -step process of how they do this and, and what they're doing. So, um, I'm going to step out of the way. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to have to step back and let Aaron take over. Are you, is that the first? That's no, not that's the a, first picture. That's the second picture. There you go. There, that's the first that's picture. That's how all right. it all starts. So, there you go. All right. So, so I'm going to stand here next to you. We're going to stand over there. This is a new project that we had... Uh, done and this great contract that i know actually supplied <laughs> us with a wonderful plywood subfloor so this sure is a plywood sub perfect it is relatively perfect because there is no such thing as a perfect subfloor as we all know but we strive we strive course. we yes. strive so it's it's this, glued screwed and tattooed it's it, it <laughs> wasn't moving that's right it wasn't moving and it wasn't nailed so that's a good thing there you so go. in this project we were actually installing like i said a uh, an unfinished floor to meet up with a existing floor. So in this project, I think it was in Mount Prospect. Yep. So um, we came in. The next picture will be the actual wood floor after it was installed. You got the next, you got the next picture there, Fuzzy? That, that looks like it's stained, though. That is not stained. What kind of wood did you put that? That is white oak. But it's dark. But it's white oak. No, but it's dark. It is not How dark. is white oak dark? It's supposed to be white, isn't it? No, it's not supposed to be white. It's actually supposed to be gray. Because <laughs> well, yes. you love gray. And no, uh, gray's, <laughs> gray's uh, old and out. Right. Um, anyway, so, but red oak has a reddish hue to it. Right. So this is just... So red oak has a pinkish hue, right. where white oak has more of a grayish green hue. Got it. Okay. So it looks like this raw. Yeah. That's that's what it looks like raw, okay. and the other characteristic to white oak is there's there's mineral streaks in there. So if you look, oh here we go again. Yeah, this look good, good right, job. Right yeah. over, I gotta get there. Goes right over. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pull my finger. Right <laughs> over. Please <there>. don't. <laughs> <laughs> right over there. Yeah. You'll see the mineral streaking. So what a mineral streak is is basically a board that is is half white and half dark. Yeah. So it's not a fully dark board or fully light board. But no. it has more character to it. It does have a lot more character to it. So it, so it, the reason why we put in white oak is because the rest of the house was white oak. So we wanted to match it up. Got it. So, Got it. But one, one interesting fact about white oak is white oak is actually, um, it's used in, 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 you know, in wine, in fermenting wine. And the reason that they use white oak is because white oak has kind of an oily, uh, sort of texture to it. So if you actually cut the board and you look at it sort of crosswise, you'll see that there's almost looks like a waxy type of a, a film over the um, over the grain structure. What's interesting about that is that when we start to apply certain coatings and certain stains, we actually can get what's referred to as tannin pull. And tannin is basically just a natural oil that, that wants to sort of leach out or seep out of white oak. So the reason Aaron is reluctantly saying we had to use white oak on this project because the rest <laughs> of the place is white oak, it's not really a, a preferred wood to work with, specifically because it has certain you know, characteristics and certain challenges when, when we're sanding and staining it. Got it. So is that something like maybe birch as well that has that, that oily type of... Birch, birch has a little bit of that as well. Um, there's certain species, white oak is notorious for it. Uh, in certain geographical regions where white oak is harvested from, we don't like because there's more oil, more tannin that comes off of uh, that lumber than certain other geographies. Uh, but it's you just have to kind of know what you're doing when you're working with white oak. So, a little bit of a. And the fun, the funny thing is, is back in the day, when they would put in these floors and then throw carpet over them, you may have a mixture of white and red, because it was. It was just oak. Put, it was just put it down. It was put down because it was there, you know. Right. So, this particular house had white oak, so we wanted to match it. So we uh, installed the white oak. The next portion that we did was actually the sanding, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see the equipment. Can you so. can you crop that down a little bit there, Fuzzy? Yeah. He's going to he's going to bring it down. So. Yeah, that's the vacuum hose. Yeah, from that's the, the vacuum uh, hose. I didn't have a picture of us actually sanding it, but that's the vacuum hose and the vacuum that the equipment is actually connected to. But it looks like the cabinets are there. 
correct because our, our, our contractor wanted us to come in and install it, <laughs> then leave for a while. <laughs> So, oh, we yeah? could, so we could rest. Oh, okay. And, and get geared up for and the get next Get geared part. up. And then, like, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks later, I, we get a phone call that, oh, we're ready. So Who's this contractor we could prefer? He's okay. a really nice guy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to use his name. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no names. No names. <laughs> no names. <laughs> so. now, well, some people will say, okay, you, you go ahead, sand, finish the floor, get it done, and then we'll come and put the cabinets in, and we'll right. finish. <laughs> so my preference is put the wood in, you know, we don't have to worry about the guys dropping a tool, the painters dropping something, yeah. and, and and that way it's done. Do you guys prefer which way it happens? It's easier for us to do it all sort of in one shot, if you will. Before the cabinets go down. Right, because then we have to sand around the cabinetry. It's fine. We, we, you know, we do it that way, uh, but it just requires a little bit more attention to detail and obviously not coming into contact with the cabinetry. So right. it does make it a little harder for us, but it's certainly a lot easier for you. I, right. I like <laughs> so I, I like having the floors done, and then mm -hmm. the last thing we're doing is touch up paint and we're out the yep. door right. because yep. I don't have to worry about the floors. Right. And A lot of contractors actually want us to come in, install the floor, sand the floor, do a couple coats, stain it, then put a couple coats, and then say, my safety net is that last coat. No. no. <laughs> safety net is not the last coat. No. If we want to be safe, and we want to make sure that we don't have an issue or we haven't already done all the work, yeah. that's why we do this for you. So what are you using the vacuum for? It's collecting the dust. Off the machines. Off the, the machines, machines, correct. So okay. we use dustless equipment. There's no such thing as dust-free equipment. So basically the dust that is going to be left on the job site is the, the, that fine particulate that actually escapes through our vacuum bags. Okay. So it's, it's a lot better than it used to be, but it's not perfect, but there is no perfect. Right, right. So... Okay. All right. So what do you got? What do we have next? So next we have actually a stain selection. So look at that. When when our project manager comes out, you just did that in up, the middle of the floor. We did do that in the middle of the floor. So if you can see, here we go again. Oh, here. That's ebony. Ebony. I can't read these. Where's ones. ivory? Uh, ebony ivory's still in the bottom. And ivory. I'm sorry. Robbie's not here. We're not saying. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. So <laughs> it's too bad. There's dark <laughs> walnut. There's different um, stain colors here that your client was able to choose from. Okay. So, um, are these the only ones you guys offer? Or no, no this these is, are just some that these she were the ones that we that we asked ideas on what they were looking for. She gave us some ideas. We started with these. I think we were able to select one of these actually. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember which one it was. I think it was we're going to find out in the next slide, though. Uh, I'm we, sure. we are going to find out. I believe it, there, there it is. Wow, that's so pretty. That is just the stain. So we that's why there's no sheen to it. There's no sheen to it whatsoever. And it looks really dull. Exactly. So that is stain applied. Right after we're done sanding, we we applied the stain, and then we left. That was it. That was it. Then we came back. Okay. The next day. So you let that actually. It's got to absorb. It's got to. It's got to. I'm, guess, I'm guessing. I'm guessing you're not shot. using the Minwax stains sealer finish stuff all in one then. No. Okay, no. so this is like real stain. Right. If you go, if you were looking at the previous slide, we actually leave the cans <laughs> of the type of stain we use. Uh huh. There you go. So there you go. So. But you know what this does by doing this stain selection process like this? It eliminates all ambiguity. Homeowners can see for themselves exactly what they're going to get. They're going to see exactly what a light color will look like, what a gray color, whatever color they're interested in. And there's no ambiguity. Is is opposed to us showing you a small. Color chip, fan color book chip. Or, or something it's like that. It's not your floor. Right. You need to see the color on your floor. Yep. So this was this floor wasn't even there until we installed it. Right. So they had no idea what it would have looked like. So for refinishing it, they know what it used to look like. Right. And now the cabinets are in. See the cabinets right. are there, yep. so you can see what it looks like against the cabinets. Right. Because and the white, countertops. White cabinets are really hard to match. I get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. I love you, Ron. Hey, it's all right, Ron. <laughs> you know, there's different shades of white, and they read a little differently. Yes, they do. Yeah, Ron's the fun side. Yeah, there you go. So, well, it, it depends on the countertops now, too. So it correct. all has to be. How blend. about the backsplash? Oh, back exactly, the paint color. You don't paint. know. What about the lighting? See, it all it matters. All, it all and you matters. haven't even talked about accessories. Right. Your towels. Right. Your, your oven mitts. Door pulls. Oh, Door pulls. You, you know, all of it comes into play. Right. So, right. You know. so what do you got for us next there, so, so next we have our, our, our first coat application. So it's not as shiny as you would expect it to be. The, the color okay. changed, though. It's lighting. Oh. 
plate. Okay. We didn't restain it. No, you didn't. No, okay. It's just lighting. All right. So I, that was. Just... I, I actually knew you were going to say that. So <laughs> we go to the next picture and so it looks that, a little bit that better. Looks, yeah, that's. Oh, see, see, look at the color there. Yep. That's so that color, it's really popping. Yes. Okay. So that's after the second coat. And that's, but that's also the white oak, and that's mm -hmm. going to show the character of the white Correct. oak that you don't get with a red oak. Right. Correct. So, mm -hmm. and then the, the last two pictures are the final, after we're the final coat. So very pretty, ended up beautiful. Homeowner was very, very happy. By the way, Ron, notice the, uh, let me, mm -hmm. oh, you see, see the blue tape right yep. there? Yeah. Okay. So that um, blue tape is protecting your cabinet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, I'm not getting that on my cabinet. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. That's right. So there you go. That's a very important part of what yep. we do is, is, is Ooh, that protection. That That's is the pretty. So Look that, at that. That, that. That's a closer up picture of the. Uh, a closer up? A closer up. Is that it makes it more better that much, way. Much, much, much more better. <laughs> Absolutely. See, so, now that's a beautiful shot right there. Look yeah. at that. So, what happens, Ron, what happens when we're done with our floor? Any idea? You, we're not allowed to walk on it. We ask for permission from you guys well, yes. to walk Absolutely. on your floor. Once we've granted you the permission. W once there? we've granted you the permission. I, and, you and know, I don't know. You don't know? No. But, I mean, we can, we, we've only got a minute to the next break. I think we, that's a good tease. Okay. Because. Yeah, we'll answer that question on the flip. Because, see, okay, it, it yes. used to look like that right there. Right. See, Fudd? Oh, see, and now it looks, now like, it looks that. like that. That's it way looks, more better. More, much more better. That's way more. You know, I don't us. think folks are tuning in for the English lesson that's going on <laughs> that's right That's a now. good thing. <laughs> Hopefully they're, they're paying attention to all of the other elements of the show. <laughs> because between the two of you. <laughs> wait, 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 was this English? Right. <laughs> I'll have to have my daughter help me with that. Yeah, right. there you go. All right, so uh, let's take a quick break, and then we're going to come back and actually find out how we should maintain and care for this floor to keep it looking like this for years to come. And with that... This is, um, there we go, Aaron, Igor from Mr. Floor. That's we'll take right. a quick break and we'll be back right this after this. This is Mighty House. Mighty House will return. Boop. Boop. All Boop. right, we're clear. Nice. Mics are still on. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. I get, I get lots and lots of comments when mics do not stay on. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. They want to hear the behind the scenes? Yeah, they yeah. want to hear They want to hear me clearing my throat? So yeah. they, they heard me hyperventilating running to my car. Like, right. Twice. Yeah. Yeah. So I would moot you on this side. <laughs> 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 it wasn't until halfway through. Well, though, wasn't it last week they said, hey, 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 what happened to the microphones? What, yeah. You went into the break and the mics died. Oh, yeah. I got, I yeah. got another one today. Oh, oh yeah. good. There you go. Well, because, I mean, they're all out there trying to memorize all the floor pl uh, products, so they want something to listen to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, shall we shall we wrap this up? Yeah. Last segment. Stand by. You do an email. No, we're we're gonna skip the email thing, and we'll just go ahead and go to this and close out with the uh, proper floor care. Let's do it. Stand by. All right, you can join us on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and Periscope Live right now. Brought to you in part by these gentlemen right here, Mr. Floor. And wherever you're watching, make sure you click on the uh, subscribe button and hit like and the little hearts and all those little fun things. Just click on all that stuff. Because then that way you'll know when we're going to be on. And uh, we've got some other specials coming up that we're going to do. So it won't be just on Wednesday nights. We'll have some other stuff here for you coming up soon. So if you want to do that, make sure you stay up on everything. You can also go to uh, MightyHouse.net. Click on the Contact Us, and you scroll to the bottom, you'll see the uh, little newsletter thing. You can fill out your basic information, click on Boom, Done, and then that way you'll get a newsletter every week telling you what we're working on, uh, past videos, and uh, what's coming up the following week. Very informational, I must say. I, I read that newsletter. Yes, and then there's like an email of the week or, you know, different stuff like that. So you never know what's going to be in there. Yep. So normally in this spot, we do our email of the week, but since we've got some special guests in here, and we teased you in that last segment of how do I keep my floor looking? You got that fuzzy? You got that last picture? How do I keep my floors looking like this for years to come? How do I do that, bud? Well, it's actually quite simple. Uh, you know, it all started about 15 years ago, Ron, when we would receive calls from our clients and they said, you know, your floors were great a year ago when you were here and you left my, my home in such beautiful shape. My floors are fantastic. 
It's a year later, my floors look hazy, they look tired, they look lifeless, there's no vibrancy. What's going on? Well, I took the, the English leather soap and a scrub brush, and I've been scrubbing my floors for the past year. Well, there you go. Why don't they look like this anymore? You know why? Because people fall for all of the ads <laughs> that they hear on the radio and, and uh -huh. see on television, uh -huh. where they think that products that leave your floor shiny somehow are doing, you know, doing Let's floors Let's add more shine. Yeah. You know, so... Because it's clean. If it's shiny, it's clean, Well, right? if it's shiny, it's clean. That's, the, that's what the advertisers want you to believe. Right. right. The reality is exactly the opposite. What's leaving, what's making your floor shiny is what the, the cleaner's leaving behind. And what the cleaner's leaving behind is oil and wax, which encapsulates on the floor. And every subsequent cleaning that you, that you uh, clean your floors, you leave more and more layering, and then you wind up creating this, this hazy, terrible mess. And if you run your hand across that floor, you'll pick it up all on your fingers. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's killing all of this vibrancy that you see on this floor. Yep. Okay? Because really the polyurethane protective coating that's on that floor is, is durable enough and it's, it, we just need to let it do its job. So the way we let it do its job is with this product right here that we have on the table. And the product is the Mr. Floor Wood Floor Cleaner, which... Oh, there. Got the zoom right on the gut. There you go. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Floor Wood Floor Cleaner, you can, you can pick it up at mrfloor.com. Uh, really anywhere in the continental United States. We ship it really nationally at this point. Uh, we've got clients coast to coast, and, and in most cases, if you're spending uh, at least $24 or more, it's free shipping. Oh, excellent. So if you buy a gallon uh, in, a, in a spray bottle, it's going to show up at your door. There's no additional cost. Uh, I don't care if you're in Monterey, California, or if you're on the, you know, on, on the East Coast, you're going to get it at no additional cost. So the other thing that's important with, with this cleaning product and by the way, very, very simple to use. It's, it's literally a spray and wipe. There is no uh, mixing of anything. It, it's not a concentrate. Um, you basically spritz it directly onto the floor. There we go, Ron's gonna get it going. And, Maybe? Um, Maybe? Yeah. It's thinking about it. Yeah, it, it's trying. Nope. Uh, there Let's we go. we go. Nope. But you squirt it like that. You basically spritz it directly onto the floor. And then now, we, it, does it come out in, is it, is it, it oh, it's misty. Yeah, we, you know what, we can actually, I don't know if you try guys can see this, but basically this is Make a, this really shiny so yeah. that Fuzzy has a, more of an issue so with, we, the, with the reflections. <laughs> we sell this microfiber mop as well. This is just a companion piece, but there's no sort of magic to, to our mop other than, you know, it's, it's really durable. It's aluminum construction. It's, you know, it's, it's wide. It's 18 inches. You know, the, the microfiber is a really good quality microfiber. You just take this off, wash it, yeah. and put it back on. So right? you, you can see right here, it's, it's Velcroed on, and you can see. throw it in the wash so you're not, you know, keep, you know, throwing things out. I mean, this is a great way to reuse and recycle. And basically, you spray the product directly onto the floor, and then you use the microfiber mop to basically go through and simply wipe the floor. Wow. Um, yeah, that's pretty the, nice. The huh? sheen off of that. Right? Now, the way you know Almost that it's as working. Bad as off my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Does that, does that, will that take the dullness yeah. off my skull or not? No. No, it won't. Well, okay. It'll take some of the sheen off, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll cut the oil. It off. might cut the exactly oil, that. yeah. You know, we've never tried it, although I have a funny story uh, to, to, to tell you about what one of our clients did with our product. Okay. But basically, the way you know it's working, Ron, is when you see all of the dirt transferred from the floor onto the mop. And that's really what the, the, the basis of our uh, cleaning philosophy is. We want to change the surface tension of this dirt transfer it from the floor onto the wiping cloth. In this case, it's microfiber, it works really well, Then you're done. And we have several clients that are like psycho about this stuff. They love it, yep. and, they and, absolutely love uh, it. So if I've got some in the truck, they ask me if I've got it or get a hold of Aaron, I want some more of that yeah. stuff. They all really love this product. And now, does it come in a larger thing than a gallon? It comes, yeah, so we actually offer it in the quart bottle, which is this guy here. Right. We also offer it in a uh, gallon format. It's a, it's a refill. Again, nothing is a concentrate. That's just a reload. Just a reload, right. right. So you run out of this, you simply take a gallon, refill it, and we want you to dispense it out of the spray bottle. We don't want you to... Dump put it in a bucket. No, no, no buckets, no mops. I mean, that's old school, and, and it's you're oversaturating the floor. There's no reason for it. Everything here is controlled, both... Volume-wise, you know how much product you're spritzing onto the floor, as well as the chemicals that are inside. They're all non-toxic, fully environmentally safe. Spray, wipe. It's, it's, it's so it doesn't come out in a stream. It's only a mist, right? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, we recommend it in a mist because it's it's nice coverage. It's nice mm -hmm. area coverage. And uh, again, through the use of these microfiber mops, which we absolutely love, um, and you know, we used to be one of the corporate partners with the Chicago Bulls. 
Um, we, we spent uh, pr about four seasons with them, and we actually taught them how to maintain the, the <laughs> basketball court at the United Center. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. which, is, which is really a funny story because they had no clue what they were doing. They were using string mops and just smearing Water. sweat and dust yeah, oh, yeah. and dirt all over the place. So we basically got them to use microfiber, our cleaning product, and uh, the floors look fantastic. And what an Beautiful. iconic floor at the yeah, United oh, yeah. Center. Oh, yeah. So besides the cleaning products we talk about all the time on your show, one of the most important things to do is to maintain your environment, okay? Yes. So okay. Um, after the floor has been installed, we've installed it when it's a controlled environment. We know it's ready to go in and everything else. We always recommend anybody putting in a new floor, even having an older floor, get a thermal hygrometer. What is a thermal hygrometer? It's going to tell you what the temperature and the humidity is in your home. Okay, so we have thermal hygrometers. They have actually on the back of them, it tells you what the relative humidity recommendations are. Okay. The temperature recommendations are. Can we order those on MrFloor.com? You can order these on MrFloor.com. Okay. So, and right now in your... your it's probably 21% humidity. Nope, 33% and 68 degrees. That's wow. not terrible. Wow. It's not so terrible. That, it, wow, so it's usually like around 21, 22% yeah. relative humidity in here. Unless Aaron's doing some heavy breathing on it. Yeah, that could well, be. I could be, but I just picked it up. So the heavy well, breathing. Aaron, why don't you flip that over so people can see the uh, the little cheat sheet on the back? Um, I don't you know if the lighting that? is gonna. Oh well. Back, back. There, there you go. Back, there back, there it is. back. <laughs> no. Yeah, nope. Here we go. We got about a minute left, there, Fuzzy. Yep. Okay. About Thirty. All right. But we also, you know, really for anybody that wants there. to learn a little bit more about, you know, some of these things, visit us at MrFloor.com. We talk about our thermal hygrometer. We talk about acclimation. We talk about what the proper range of, of relative humidity and temperature needs to be. We talk about our cleaning products. You know, we, we do a lot of, um, uh, you know, really education. I mean, our clients, you know, really are fully educated. When we're done with them, you know, they will know their floor. Yep. You know, unless they're just not paying attention. Take a um, look at the podcast. We have podcasts. Excuse me. Uh, um, Articles about blue tape on your floor, blogs and all that, all yeah. kinds of blogs. Yeah, so take a look at all nice kind of educational blog blog page. So, MrFloor.com really is your resource. Uh, we strongly recommend that you visit it if you're interested in in uh, having a project done and you're in the Chicagoland area. Give us a call certainly. But if you're listening to us in, in uh, somewhere in Idaho or, or you know further west, Colorado, wherever you are, go to MrFloor.com. You can order these products there. It's free shipping to the house. Do yourself a favor. It's very easy to clean the floors and, and you know. It makes them look great. Good. It makes them look brand new. All right. Hey, next week we're going to talk about exterior doors and how to properly install them, maintain them, and uh, make sure you're picking the right one for the right location. And uh, with that, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Yeah. MrFloor.com for more information. And at, at this point, I think, Fuzzy, are we out, man? Yeah. All right. Let's roll. Keep right. it square and level until next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>